Follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the Honda Empowerment, Liberation, Exploration, Versatility, Aspiration, Transformation and Evolution. Yes, this is the Honda Elevate and I told you the full form of the Elevate. I am not kidding. Honda actually made that up. It makes no sense whatsoever. But the Elevate is the last car in the segment. Yeah, Honda is very late to the SUV party. But they have not even given this car segment leading features. A lot of the competition has a lot more features. So Honda has to really focus on the pricing because pricing will play a crucial role in the success of the Elevate. The city starting price is Rs 13.68 lakhs going all the way till 18.87 lakhs on road Mumbai. So the Elevate can't be priced at a huge premium when compared to the city because obviously it is a city based SUV. And since we are talking about money, let me tell you about an amazing fintech platform called PayMe. It's a RBI registered NBFC into digital lending which offers attractive discounts and interest rates with complete digital onboarding and easy repayments. Taking loan from PayMe requires minimum KYC and can be availed without any collaterals. The approval is instant. PayMe is fully compliant with recent RBI digital lending guidelines. Check the link in the description to know more. Coming back to the Elevate, one of the biggest disadvantages of this car is that it does not have a diesel engine because a diesel is a diesel is a diesel is a freaking diesel. Now this is the key of the vehicle, same as the Honda City. This is to lock the car, this is to unlock the car, that's it, two buttons on the key. There's an additional button here for the CVT variant which also gives you a remote start function. And the design is actually inspired from the Pilot. Yes, very much like the Pilot in terms of the front end. But it's a love it or hate it design, but it definitely grows on you. The Pilot, of course, is a three-row SUV, so kind of justifies the boxy design. And you know what? This car is having the same width as the Creta, but in terms of ground clearance, in terms of length, in terms of wheelbase, in terms of height, it is bigger than the Creta, which is good. Straight away, let's open the engine bay. And there we have it. Not yet. Ah, uh, yeah. The Honda VTEC motor. This goes all the way up. Look at the amount it goes. Like, oh my God, this is like 90 degrees. So Honda has actually offered something known as gas struts without having any struts whatsoever. You can open the engine bay like that, point it towards the sky. What a unique feature Honda, amazing stuff. There is insulation there. Engine has this sort of cover, not really, because this is exposed of course. Making some sound, but it's extremely refined on the inside. Some empty space here. They have this sort of a partition so that water does not splash on the battery. But this is so freaking amazing. I never thought Honda would think this level. So I kind of like this for sure. Let's just shut this and there it shuts. It's not very heavy as such. And if you notice, the grill is huge, but it is covered right here. Big Honda logo. Here it is open. The lights are full LED units. So four LEDs here, three LEDs here. This is for high beam, this is for low beam. This is the LED DRL. Fog lamps are also LED. Here you get a towing hook and you don't get front parking sensors. You don't get a front camera either. Meanwhile, the indicator is functioning here, taking the space of the LED DRL, of course. It does not get radar. It obviously gets Honda sensing, which relies on cameras or rather a camera. There is the camera right in the center. Coming to the side of the car, you would notice that this body side cladding looks nice. The car is small, but it is actually bigger than its competition, which is kind of nice. Tire size is 17 inches. Finally, Honda is giving bigger size than 185 mm. 215 17s. Alloy wheel design is similar to the city. Similar, not the same. All right, you don't get a camera here. You get it on the other side because of Honda's lane watch, of course. These roof rails don't seem functional. You get a shark fin antenna, chin to mint to sunroof, of course. These actually come from the city, the door handles. and. Just put your hand inside and it unlocks the car, which is fantastic. I love the way Honda does this keyless entry thing. But this keyhole is kind of exposed, which is out of place for sure. Rear, you do not get discs. These are drums at the rear, which is kind of disappointing. Overall design of the car looks nice. I definitely like it. And you don't get this connected tail light. It says iVTEC right here. LED brake light, but halogen, halogen. Yeah, indicator and reverse light are actually halogen here says elevate rear parking sensors four of them there's a camera here of course and facial Khan's fingers of truth hunting for the exhaust which is actually placed somewhere here yeah there it is hidden 
let's open the boot which is again segment best 458 liters the kretas is 433 liters seltos is also the same there's a light here spare wheel is not an alloy in fact it's smaller size 16 inch 215 60 16 toolkit jack rose everything is placed right here and yeah <laughs> loading lip is fine so let's just shut this rear wiper washer fluid actually comes out from there high mounted stop lamp doesn't get a rear spoiler as such let's get into the rear okay to open it from inside now if you notice one thing this is actually folding 40 60 in order to increase the boot carrying capacity compared to the city it actually gets adjustable headrest but the city has a center headrest so center passenger does not get a head here get a center armrest which does not touch down like in the case of the city twin cup holders right here isofix child seat mounts again you get a lap belt not a proper seat belt there space at the rear is actually very impressive good amount of leg room good amount of knee room under thigh support is okay not that great ac vents here you get a power outlet here city gets two power outlets but no usb charging sockets at the rear no height adjustable seat belts handle to hold on to dashboard design actually looks quite nice similar to the city but revised lot of parts actually come from the city including the headrest seats are really very nice extremely comfortable i like the color in the city you get beige for the regular version not the hybrid here you get this brown finishing and the insert of leather along with beautiful stitching it's fantastic as well so honda has done good quality in this car light placement here on the top i think this is led or this is white light whatever sunroof is really very small but i would have really appreciated height adjustable seat belts no one touch power windows the city actually gets one touch eight speaker system yeah tweeter speaker eight speaker system in this car which gets a bigger screen the lower variants actually rely on four speakers so it gets a smaller 8 inch screen in lower variants this one has a bigger 10.25 inch screen which i'll show you in a bit it misses out on a lot of features 360 degree parking camera not there heads up display not there and it even does not get electric adjust for the driver seat which some of the competition also offers instead of 360 degree parking camera it gets 180 degree parking camera yeah because there's a camera there for the lane watch of course seats are very nice and comfortable yeah very nice look at these seats amazing door pockets are sort of slim here but it will accommodate a bottle right there similar to the city but in the city there's no auto written it has this line there and it has illumination for all four of them however this only has one touch for the driver. The city has one touch up and down for all the freaking windows. So I don't know why Honda has removed some features from the city. They want to keep the city still as the more premium offering, I believe. Traction control button, headlight leveler. There is a proper dead pedal. If you notice one thing, this is little raised. This is less raised. This is even lesser raised. See the distance, they're not aligned. I think intentionally, of course. To open the fuel lid, this is to open the hood of the vehicle. Hard plastics are in plenty. Yeah. Car is full of hard plastics. This is for the lane watch camera. Engine start button which pulsates with this red light of course. Steering comes from the city of course. And so do a lot of other parts in this car. So you can't see this at all. Yeah, You can't see the cluster now. Because there is this button with which I can increase the intensity of the instrument cluster. Again it is coming from the Honda city. 7 inch TFT screen right there. You have a tachometer. You get a lot of information there. It's nice. Quality is nice. G meter is there. And then obviously there's something known as safety support because it has got ADAS. So you can browse through a lot of stuff like lane keep assist, parking sensors, collision mitigation and all that. You can get into settings. You can customize the display. You can see information. But honestly, I just want to keep it at tachometer because that is the best. This is analog. You get the fuel meter. Again, same as the city. 10.25 inch screen like I was telling you, which is fantastic because... It is the best we have seen from Honda's locally manufactured car till date. But there's not much to play around with. Yeah, it's just kind of boring. Can't get into multiple menus. There's no air purifier. There's no front ventilated seats. So many features are missing in this car. Why Honda? Why? And here obviously you get this frameless mirror. Uh, inside rear view mirror. Which is auto dimming of course. Really nice. Here you get a light. Again this is a premium treatment. It gets 6 airbags. No light for the driver of course. Now... My knee touches here slightly. Proper wireless charging pad, unlike the city, where in its afterthought, of course. Power outlet, 12 volt. Two USB charging sockets, USB A. No USB C in this car. Glove box doesn't want to get the cooling function. It feels a bit flimsy. Nice material here. Again, wood finishing. This is hard. Overall quality of the cabin is actually very impressive. 
cruise control buttons and this is obviously for lane keep assist and all that these are the buttons for audio system as well as to browse through that screen the horn horn is very meek and you've got some storage here this does not slide ahead and behind handbrake here we should have got an electric parking brake come on if you can offer it in the city why not offer it here as well so you would have happened i mean there would be more storage here for sure twin cup holders meanwhile these are the controls for the air conditioning single zone not dual zone air conditioning is actually quite good here now let's actually get into reverse and here we are that is the reverse parking camera which has got multiple modes camera quality is okay it's not great lane watch camera works like this like i was telling you 180 degree parking camera not 360 degree here now the thing is that it gets apple carplay and android auto connectivity wireless of course and since it has an eight speaker system let's listen to some audio right away <laughs> audio quality is decent it's not exceptional but gets the job done automatic headlights it does not get automatic wipers there's no sensor here only how can it get it meanwhile light placement here on the top it gets a chintum into sunroof and the competition is offering panoramic sunroof i don't know why honda has you know limited itself to offering a smaller sunroof and that's about it it does not open any further the problem is that this thing is very flimsy under heavy braking now it slides ahead and shuts itself finger test and there it fails so yeah chin to minto here handle to hold on to even on this side which is kind of nice so the best thing i like is the driving position of this car you can see the hood even when the seat is at its lowest position you can see the hood that's how it's done wipers work decently well but since you already spoken so much about the features or either the lack of it let's see how does it drive so let's start driving right away before that let me show you the steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake and uh, you have to push this inside i wish it had usb-c i wish it had a lot more features but can the driving experience actually make up for the lack of features let's start driving right away Okay, time for the moment of truth. Air conditioning off, traction control off as well. Handbrake down into first gear, hazard lights off and lane watch camera on as well. And now we are going to launch it to see if the driving experience makes up for the lack of features. So guys, listen to this. Firstly, let me adjust the mirror. Oh my God, the mirrors are huge. So give you a good view. And the driving position is the best. But anyways, oh my God, rest is almost 5,000 RPM and off we go. <laughs> 7000 rpm my god that is what honda vtech is all about and that is the reason why you would buy this car ah uh, brakes could be better if they were not i would be in that lake by now but anyways performance is good enough here first and foremost nobody trust me nobody makes engines as good as honda at least naturally aspirated engines because we don't get to encounter turbo engines from honda at least well i've encountered the turbo engine there <laughs> honda sensing coming into play I've encountered or rather driven the Honda's 1 litre VTEC engine in the city in Thailand and that's a fantastic engine because VTEC plus turbo what could be better but trust me this engine is so ballistic that I should stop right now put the car in first gear rev the motor dump the clutch and listen to this guys oh, 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 oh. I become Santa Claus whenever I drive a Honda VTEC because that is the kind of performance it has to offer unfreaking believable this engine is truly magical yes this car weighs 99 kgs more than the city so that does performance but you would not complain because this engine is just unbelievable in the way it puts out all the power firstly low end is very peppy so it's nice in the low end city driving is good obviously this car is based on the city's platform so it has to excel in the city so it feels peppy enough then there's a nice big flat spot in the mid-range because obviously it's not a turbocharged petrol engine so it doesn't have the grunt of a turbo engine in the mid-range and in the top end oh my goodness nothing beats this engine past 4000 rpm the engine wakes up it all of a sudden roars and goes ballistic all the way to 7000 freaking rpm my goodness this car makes me shout and the insulation is also not that great which is a typical honda thing so you can hear a lot of stuff inside the cabin okay want to make a quick overtake just down freaking shift and go man that's how it's done in this car you have to downshift you have to use the gearbox because the mid-range is quite flat what i really love is the driving position because i can see the hood the seat is at its lowest position right now and i can just point the car where i want position it however i like it that is the kind of confidence it inspires me 
I mean, it gives me that kind of confidence. But I'll tell you one thing very honestly: this car feels more SUV to drive because of the way it gives me a complete view of what's around and the hood positioning. Oh my goodness! Honda has nailed it with the driving position. Ride is actually quite nice, soft of course. So over bad bumps, no issue at all. And when you drive it sanely, na, you will not hear the engine at all. Shh! Don't make any sound. The engine can't be heard. That is the refinement of a Honda VTEC. Honda makes the best engine, and that is the reason why Honda is like, forget every feature. My engine is the best. You buy me for the freaking engine. How can the Koreans not match Honda when it comes to naturally aspirated petrol engines? Because oh my goodness, it's one point five liter. Freaking first gear. Let's go, bro. Oh, 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 oh. Horn is so bad though. <laughs> Wheel spins any time randomly. There's a city. Oh my God, what is this Toyota Innova doing? Oh thank God, I thought it's Maruti Suzuki Invicto. Thankfully not. Anyways. <laughs> this engine is a riot of sorts so it produces 121 ps of power at 6600 rpm and bump no issues at all torque output 145 newton meters which comes in at approximately 4300 rpm result is that the output is the same as the city they could have increased the output considering the weight has increased and the aerodynamics have diminished a bit but no problem here because the engine is so strong now The only drawback of the engine is that it is limited to okay one second whoops it oh no ride is good actually well insulated top speed is limited to 160 km per hour which makes no sense whatsoever i don't know why honda does this limiting of the top speed look at the way this car actually goes around the corners it's unfreaking believable for an suv sort of this is front wheel drive jacked up hatchback like all other cars like the creta and seltos everything is like that obviously those cars also get the option of four wheel drive abroad this is india specific at the moment But trust me on this. With the kind of ground clearance it has, kind of segment leading 220 mm, it handles beautifully well. There is body roll, but the steering is a joy to use because it has good amount of feel and feedback. And then you come across bumps, no problem. You can just go without any hassle. That is the kind of performance it has to offer. Brakes are decent, could be better. Tires are okay. Here we go again. I can do this all day long. Honda V Tech. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> un freaking believable what an engine and then we have a road block no problem because i can simply take it like this this is not a city this is an elevate we are sitting with a elevated driving position which means i can simply drive it on the worst of roads one of the biggest drawbacks of the city is the ground clearance and this car sorts that out with a massive ground clearance of 220 mm which means that you don't have to worry over the worst of roads you can just take it wherever you feel like and that is the usp of this car Un freaking believable bumps. I will go in them intentionally because the car handles them beautifully well. We are at seven thousand RPM. Oh, so the gearing has been shortened in order to improve the smoothness and the acceleration as well. So I think by eight percent in first gear, seven percent in second gear. That's the reason it's not reaching hundred kilometers per hour in second. It's reaching eighty-six kilometers per hour in second gear. Never mind, you really don't need it as such. Okay, so in terms of the driving package, Honda has definitely nailed it. Very strong mechanicals in this car. and that's the reason it will put a joy on your face when you're driving it i'm sure none of you are going to drive it the way i'm driving it right now there's also cvt which is 4% more efficient which actually brings me to the disappointment with this engine because this is a honda vtec right it should be efficient it's not really very efficient actually because the claimed ari number is 15.31 km per liter for this one the cvt is more efficient 15.31 km per liter ari i claimed means that in the real world this one will return only single digit figures It might stretch to double digits, but mostly it's going to return single-digit numbers, which means it's not very efficient as such, which is a little disappointing because with Honda you expect a lot of efficiency as well. So that's kind of missing. In fact, uh, this is less efficient than the Creta and the Seltos. I'm talking about naturally aspirated engines. Turbo is not available. Diesel is not available. Hybrid is not available. Yeah, Honda has also missed a hybrid. Honda's hybrid is fantastic. Imported, so it's expensive. So that's the reason they have not offered it. they are like we'll go fully electric instead in watch camera is useful at times i like the way this car drives i really like it i love the gearbox it's so freaking smooth to operate the clutch is also light so in terms of uh, how it is to drive it's nice but most people might oh, just end up sitting in the rear seat and those people will also like the car because the ride is also quite good which actually brings me to a few things which i want to talk about 
is it that Honda has actually gone ahead and I would have gone full throttle here, but people are rocking, so we're just going to put this car into four low. Kidding, but uh, I would have really appreciated if Honda would have given it a turbo engine option. They are not planning that, which is kind of unfortunate. That said, uh, with the lack of features in this car, has Honda actually bought a knife to a gunfight? Not really, because the driving experience makes up for everything. The position. I mean the seating position, the driving position is so good now. When I can see the bonnet completely, it helps me position the car exactly in the position I want it to go, which is what really surprises me, and that actually makes me want to go to 80 kilometers per hour and do the brake test. Okay, as our lights turned on, that was good. Into first gear, and it's time to launch again. Listen to this. Whoa! <laughs> You will never miss a gear because the gearbox is so freaking butter, butter in this car. That is how the gearbox has been calibrated. The steering has good feet. It's not as sharp as the CT, but it is way better than the Creta. This car drives better than the Creta. It rides better than the Creta. It is just better than the Creta in terms of the driving experience. This engine, I can keep praising it all day long, which actually brings me to the pricing of this car. Firstly, for the automatic Honda charges, 1.45 lakhs more in the city, of course. So here also I expect something similar but just get the petrol manual because the manual is a manual is a manual it gives you the better driving experience i like how just press one button turn on fraction control and just go bananas now this is a six speed gearbox if i put it in a higher gear obviously you can't hear the engine it is that silent in the morning when i was started the car now i was like okay let's go then like, oh it's turned off no it is on it is that silent it's unbelievably smooth it's unbelievably silent it's unbelievably refined like a honda should always be <coughs> oh my god i didn't expect the elevate to be so good it's definitely surprised me here for sure and at the end of the day it's the vtec magic which has come into play more power would definitely help because this is 121 ps the competition is actually using a gun in a knife fight right now because obviously they have turbo power the Seltos has 160 ps of power do you know what is 160 ps of power it's more than the bmw x1 as well that is the kind of performance i mean the kind of output is being given by kia and the rivals right now and honda is last to the segment they've not made a breakthrough product they've not made something which will make you stand up and take notice but once you drive this car you will really appreciate it and if you're the kind who are like you know what how did honda miss out on the fact that the koreans are offering so many features why is honda not offering so many features well for a bit honda would be like we have qdr quality durability reliability which the koreans don't have i don't agree to this point but i would say okay chalo, honda i agree chalo, chalo, thik, thik, thik. Bol diya, man liya. Thik hai? but you can ignore hyundai you can ignore kia also because you're like there are these people who will only buy a japanese car but you can't ignore the mothership which is toyota if toyota is offering a hybrid in the segment if toyota is offering panoramic roof a 360 degree parking camera and all those things honda you cannot ignore that that is just not done which also brings me to a very weird analogy which i wanted to also put across is that honda makes the best naturally aspirated petrol engines it's akin to saying that film fair makes the best magazine but who actually buys magazines these days or reads magazines these days nobody does it right because if you want your urfi javed content you would go to viral bihani you would definitely not go to one second we just take a quick u-turn so you can also see how is it turning radius you will not go to film fair similarly people are more interested in alternate powertrains not a naturally aspirated petrol engine they want turbo petrol engine they want hybrid honda's hybrid is fantastic they also we are going to take it through a rough yeah they also want diesel because diesel still dominates in the segment because a lot of creta sales are still diesel yeah majority creta sales are still diesel so i don't know why honda missed out on that but i think I have three verdicts to give you today with regards to the Elevate. If I be pessimistic, I would say that Honda has done too little too late. If I'm optimistic, I would say, oh my God, it's a Honda JDM for the win. It's going to sell. Everyone is going to buy one. But realistically, let's be honest, this car is going to sell in decent numbers. It's not going to do something what the Seltos did for Kia, sell in like huge numbers. It's going to sell like two to 4,000 units a month, which is good amount of volume considering the price considering the features honda should just be careful of the pricing because if price rise not rise if price right this car will definitely do decent numbers it will not break the creta because people are so feature-minded but drive this car once and you'll forget 
everything because this is where this car truly excels the driving experience is just phenomenal here it's time to burn some rubber again ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho engine is so well done na i can do this all day long nothing's going to happen that's honda for you <laughs> it brings out the inner child in you i'm not well right now i'm a bit sick but once i got hold of first gear rev the nuts to 7000 rpm all the bacteria went out of the window that is the kind of performance it has to offer and trust me it's not as fast as say the seltos but it's not about how fast you go it's how you go fast and that's where it excels the seltos obviously goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in 8.6 or 8.7 seconds this takes around 1 and 1/2 seconds more do i care no because i don't need to the performance is not blisteringly quick but it gives you the feel it's all about the feel at the end of the day it doesn't matter that it doesn't have a turbo because this car does not have asthma it is naturally aspirated pure i am putting my head down thinking i'll touch that tree i'm so stupid oh doggy where are you so lost so it's time to do it once again ha huh, by the way fuel tank is very small 40 liters very chintu mintu here and uh 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 uh, uh and off we go By the way Honda Sensing has lane departure warning lane keep assist forward collision warning automatic emergency braking all of that is also there obviously that's what Honda Sensing is all about and it works decently well only thing is in foggy conditions and all we have to see how it works because the camera is not going to be as good as a radar of course so guys this is my video of the Honda Elevate if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon but i can't get over it i'm so freaking sorry i just can't i have to stop i have to get into first gear i have to rip apart the motor look at it we spin like mad go from right to left what a car what an engine just add more features honda you will kill the competition oh by the way it says check rear seats anyways let's turn this on and notice one thing does this full swipe up this is surprising oh look at the silhouette of the car it welcomes you from there come on don't take so much time Wow, Honda! So much gimmicks now, huh? Into first gear, handbrake down, and let's do this once again. Okay, yes, I agree to whatever you say. Lane watch on, wheel spin on, and. Unbelievable fun this car is. Now, if you like this vlog, you know all what to do. But also. Don't forget to check out the amazing fintech platform called Paymi. Bye bye.